Dr. Jones. Good morrow. Good morning. Um, today we'll talk about GHB. So we'll start with a case. Uh, we have a 28 year old male. <coughs> he comes in kind of sleepy, somnolent. Um, he's got a vomit on his shirt. He is dressed to impress. He just yeah. came from the club. Um, <laughs> physical exam looks a little bit, oh, yeah. Uh, kind of borderline hypotensive. I mean, I'm sorry, um, bradycardic, a little uh, normal tensive. Respiratory rate is like on the low side. He's got pinpoint pupils, but otherwise, that's about it. So the first thing you're thinking of is <laughs> in 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 the real world when this guy presents to you, you're actually thinking more like opiates, right? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so we'll talk about the mechanism of action, mechanism of action, overdose, and treatment. Um, what we do in withdrawal and uh, other uses for GHB. Um, so for the sake of science, I tried it. Uh, I mean, Delna offered. Uh, just kidding. Um, Delna did offer though. So it's a hydrocarbon ring. <laughs> Uh, it's actually a, a naturally occurring neurotransmitter, um, so you can find uh, levels of GHB in the body. Um, so the test itself is actually what we'll get to. Is it has to be extremely, um, it, it is not as sensitive to make sure that we don't um, uh, falsely accuse people of uh, GHB intoxication. Uh, it works as a precursor to GABA, glutamine and glycine, acts on, the, uh, G, uh, on a personal GHB receptor, but also as a weak agonist for um, the G, uh, GABA B receptor. Um, that's about it. All right. um, so it was used in the 1960s as an um, anesthetic. Um, it's also started being uh, looked at for uh, narcolepsy as early as the 1970s. Um, kind of the earliest, um, more pop culture uh, references of GHB were seen kind of in bodybuilders, uh, used it for, um, like, as, a, as an alternative to a steroid. And then kind of the more, like, current day uses is more like a party drug and um, obviously more unfortunately like a date rape drug. Um, and today it's actually on the market um, as a, a drug for narcolepsy. Um, so you can take it uh, in many ways. Um, you can take it orally, you can snort it, you can inject it. Comes usually um, as a powder form, which either is placed into a capsule um, or can also be found as a liquid. Kind of take it in like a, a bottle cap. So at small doses, it really gives you more like of an alcohol buzz, which I guess is the intended um, effect. And then in larger doses, it's like you're completely wasted. So you'll feel happy, you'll feel a little drunk, you'll lose inhibitions, silly, um, you'll kind of just like I said, just get a little bit on the more tipsy side. Um, kind of in terms of like doses, ranges from like a gram to four grams. Um, by four grams, you're already um, in trouble. Kind of works fairly quickly and metabolizes uh, fairly quickly. The mechanism of onset is about five to 15 minutes. Um, lasts about six hours and then is metabolized quickly. So a lot of the times by the time we see them, they're probably within that six hour window, but if you wait another six hours, you'll, they'll likely metabolize um, and be back to baseline. So when they overdose, um, it's kind of like they're completely comatose from alcohol, right? They're, they lose consciousness, they're combated, they're combated, they're agitated, they're bradypneic, they're bradycardic, um, sometimes they're hypothermic got vomit all over them, um, so they really have a pretty low GCS. And then kind of on the, the more extreme, um, they can even go into cardiac arrest, uh, seizures, and, um, and unfortunately death. So how do we manage this? Like what do we do when we have this? First of all, you have to have a pretty, you have to have corroborating evidence to suggest that this even is GHB. Uh, usually they'll come with a friend that said, oh, they did it, or um, you'll use some context clues. Maybe you'll find it on them in some capacity. Um, in terms of like what you do if you know it is and what you don't know, um, it's pretty much supportive care. You just give it time. It's probably going to metabolize on your ER stay, in, uh, in, within their ER stay, and you can probably discharge them. But you'll have a low threshold for intubation if they need it. Um, but Essentially, the prevalence of intubation is like ranges like pretty wide range from 10 to 57 percent, um, according to one study. Um, I think that's because if they come in as an altered patient and you really don't know what to make of them um, unless you have some corroborating information. Um, but usually, they only stay intubated like for like 
200 minutes. Like they, it, it'll, it'll metabolize and then you'll quickly see that they are okay and it's probably an intox. Um, you can get fluids and uh, pressors if they're hypotensive and then the atropine for bradycardia. For people who take this on a regular basis, um, you can uh, go into withdrawal um, as early as like 12 to 24 hours after your last dose. Um, usually presents as anxiety, insomnia, tremors, um, pretty much like you know, benzo, benzo withdrawal as well, and you get benzos. Um, don't forget that there's other precursors that are also on um, the dark market, um, GBL and 1,4-butanidiol. Uh, these are both precursors and tend to be more potent. So, like I said, we're using it more and more for narcolepsy. Um, it's taken at night um, for se usually about several doses. It'll kind of the goal is that it increases REM sleep and kind of makes the patient, a narcoleptic patient, mirror more of a normal sleep pattern. Um, but they, it does wear off, and then they have to redose in the middle of the night. Um, in terms of effects, it, re it reduces um, the incidence of cataplexy during the day, which is like that when you just like lose tone and collapse, and excessive daytime sleepiness. Um, it has other uses um, in obstetrics, um, it kind of dilates, it helps dilate the cervix. Um, it's used for uh, like anxiolysis um, and, uh, in, in like laboring patients. It's used for anxiolysis in, in like small doses, helps with kind of like inhibition in sex, has like known to make the experience better, so they say. <laughs> Uh, it's been studied a little bit as use of an antidepressant, although that isn't widely used, and it's also used as an anesthetic, although it doesn't do anything on the autonomic nervous system, so that still remains active, so your body still can respond to pain. Um, it has poor pain control in general. It's just kind of that amnestic effect, um, and it can cause hypokalemia, but that can be um, corrected. Um, and it's also used, like Ronnie alluded to, um, in ETOH and, um, and opioid withdrawal, although this isn't well studied um, and it's not widely used. Uh, pretty much it's GB, uh, GHB um, in Europe is still uh, being used in like Italy and France um, for a lot of these indications, um, but in the United States it's a class one drug and um, we only use it in kind of in nar narcolepsy at this point. So, take home points, works on the GABA B receptors, acts as a CNS depressant. In overdose, it mirrors kind of uh, uh, significant ETOH intox. Uh, you manage with supportive care, and you manage your ABCs if you need to. Um, if you have a very high suspicion that GBH is involved, you might want to just wait a little bit longer. Maybe give some like non, maybe not non-invasive because they're altered, but kind of try to hold off with the intubation as long as possible because by the time they're coming to you, it's probably fairly long in that six-hour course. Um, Withdrawal looks like benzo, benzo withdrawal. It can be fatal. You treat that with benzos. There's no real point in diagnostic confirmation because it's going to leave, and usually it's not, and it's a send-out test anyway, so it, it will do nothing for us. Um, at the end of the day, maybe it's not so bad. It has a bunch of uses, even though we don't use it that often <laughs> here. Um, but yeah, so thanks a lot. This is my little munchkin. Oh, my... my. I don't know if you know, I didn't know, I have a, we have a baby in CCT, and the girlfriend say, ah, it looks so liquid, liquid G. I was just like, what? Yeah. So I have to like look at uh, so liquid G and like, Georgia homeboy also. Oh, know, I have a, hold on, I have a list of. <laughs> so, Georgia homeboy. It's it goes Sherman, by a bunch. <laughs> like blue nitro. Goes by, let's see, so yeah, like Georgia Homeboy, Gina, Liquid E, Liquid X, <laughs> fan Fantasy, Poor Man's Heroin, <laughs> straight up. I've seen a couple more of these here in Brooklyn. I've been seeing a few more of them in our ER. It's not very common, but we definitely are seeing more here as like some of the younger, like, Brave hipster party groups are moving south in Brooklyn. We're seeing a lot more. How do I how do I play it? Exactly, because that's how they relax after all the crystal meth. There you go. So my my little boy got into it. Oh, you can't hear the music. But anyway, there's some like. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's crazy.
Yeah, that's <laughs> One thing that Sarah was also pointing out that people forget is the dose, despite the fact that like the primary, primarily leaves your system after 20 to 40 minutes, it is cumulative, the dosing. So people who are using it over a long period of time, especially the G&T folks who are doing it like all day or all night, um, it may take them longer than 20 to 40 minutes to come out of a, uh, an episode because it's additive over time, depending on how long they've been using it for. So um, if you're not seeing an effect right away, don't, don't be afraid to intubate if you have to. I just want to add something. I think that the one important thing when they're super intoxicated is they sort of lose their brainstem reflexes, so they lose their gag reflexes, yeah. yeah. which is the reason that a lot of folks used to intubate them right away when they came into the ER because they don't have a gag, right? And you think that means that they're going to lose their airway, but it doesn't usually. They yeah. can maintain it. And I think the classic story is they get intubated as an undifferentiated, like, loss of brainstem reflexes, and then four hours And then they wake up. self yeah, exactly. Until you get those screw yourself and leave it in bed, right? So that was like <laughs> sort of the went from yep. GH when first started coming in. That was our experience a lot. So. <laughs> yes, the other thing to remember...